Okay, and here we are, back with you for hour number three on this Monday. And most of you know that means it's time to bring you up to date on the Fukushima Daiichi catastrophe, calamity beyond a disaster, beyond words, the most horrible accident in recorded human history caused by us. And we haven't even begun to see this thing play out yet. It's just getting unrolled. We are now literally within days of four years, 311, and we are coming up on March the 11th next week. And first up, uh, we're going to go right away to both of our guests because one of our guests, the one up in the middle of the black ocean tonight, is uh, Dana Dernford. And uh, let's get Yochi on first. Are you there? Yeah, I'm uh, there today is in Frankfurt, Germany, where there's a week-long conference. Uh, You're in on Frankfurt. Renewable energy. Oh, oh, darn. Yeah, re- there's a large conference here on renewable energy alternatives to nuclear Power, which, as you know, the uh, people of Germany and the and the, and the uh, government, the state of Germany, have opted to go non-nuclear. They still have nuclear plants from both, you know, the uh, period when the, uh, Germany was divided between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. So there's reactors right, of right. both types, and they're, they shut down the uh, ones from the former Russian world, the Soviet world. But you know, they are moving forward. And, uh, you know, trying to encourage, uh, more and more people, companies, uh, institutions to mm-hmm. go not, uh, you know, to not be so reliant on these really horrific forms of, you know, uh, energy, but well, to, you know, develop what they have at home, you right. know, and, uh, their extinction level, extinction level, an in- intelligent country, huh? Their extinction technologies. Yes. And that's all there is to it. Exactly. Exactly, and, and uh, so the Germans have definitely, and then the Swiss and Austria and the German-speaking world, is doing their best to move away from this nightmare mm-hmm. of the atomic age and the, and for them also the fossil fuel age, because you know the fossil fuels led to World War II, the drive for fossil fuels. So, and to become, you know, to develop all more alternative energies, to go into conservation, not to be you know, energy pigs and stuff. Um, the other thing that really impressed me here, you know, I went to a little town last night outside Frankfurt. It was snowing and all, but there were about 60 people, local residents, you know, average people who were protesting against nuclear energy and supporting ah, good uh, the Japanese people on Fukushima. And these protests have gone on, well, at first in 250 cities and towns, but now uh, it's down to 50, but that's a, a remarkable over the past four years in solidarity and support of the people of Japan against the Fukushima disaster. So this is one of the stories that we haven't really read about. You know, there's news agencies all no, over this country. Heard it, right? I mean, nothing you know, about it. Nothing. Right? We've heard nothing that the German people feel strongly about this, passerby, understand and support this, and they're out there in the freezing cold, you know, uh, and singing, so- you know, uh, singing songs and, you know, holding together and, you know, giving a little talk. And there was a bunch of people from Japan and uh, South Korea uh, last night, obviously, for this conference, who, you know, uh, sp- uh, spoke out and give their point of view. One fellow who's uh, been a, a, uh, camped out in front of Satsuma Sendai, the big nuclear power plant down the southernmost tip of Japan that the government is, you know, it's a mock fuel plant that the government's trying to reopen for some reason. And he was one of the first protesters down, because there's nothing around this plant. There's no shops. No, no restaurant, no stores, no nothing. So he has to tent in there every day, and he's been on vigil for months and plans to do it for the duration. So um, a young uh, female journalist who used to be a comedian in Osaka, and uh, she was so disturbed by what happened to Fukushima, she got into being a real reporter, you know, uh, really trying to tackle Tokyo Electric Power Company, get past her lies, so... You know, quite, uh, and then also South Korea with their 21 nuclear reactors, you know, uh, in a very, very smaller land base in Japan, in a very uh, active nuclear industry, trying to take that on, you know, uh, in a country that is resource poor. I mean, although, you know, uh, the government there has never made an attempt, to, uh, China does import low-grade coal, they never made an attempt to import any of it. So, right. it's right. like, it's good to see Despite all the discouragement you run into when you go into places of uh, Fukushima or, you know, uh, you know, the whole sectors of demoralization, uh, here and there. And as you know, in the United States, people just don't know what to do about things like Hanford. Uh, 
no. the Savannah River. They don't know what to do. Nothing. You know? um, they, they, they have no people idea. people here who are educated, educated, intelligent, mm-hmm. and doing what they can, and it, amount, it, it does amount to something. This is happening on the fourth anniversary of the conference of the Fukushima disaster, and also uh, in the year of the 70th anniversary mm-hmm. of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki a bombing, and five years before the Tokyo Olympics, so people are beginning to see the light here that is dangerous. In Tokyo, 200 kilometers is much too close to Fukushima, where radiation levels are spiking again and again, keep spiking, much too dangerous, high radiation levels down, and... Uh, and, th- and luckily, Germany is a country which has traditionally had a uh, very strong Olympic team. So what Germany does does matter in the world of Olympics. They're not a third world country that depends on Japanese, you know, Olympic Committee to give them, a, you know, a couple million dollars to keep their sporting program going. Germany and its own right is a country very, you know, the German food purity laws, you know, Jeff, you know, they, they yeah. set the standard for the world yeah. on yeah, non-toxic yeah. food. It's organic food, you know, I mean, there's a huge organic food movement here, organic, you know, uh, uh, supermarkets, uh, organic stores, organic product movement in Germany. So this is the land of the great hope, I think, in our time. And, um, well, if we, if we could just get the, uh, going, going. get, get the Zionist mm-hmm. chains off of those people, they could resume once again their climb to the top yeah. of the world in terms yeah. of technology. Yeah. Uh, sciences, the arts, you yeah. name it. The German people are absolutely genetically uh, extraordinary people. And uh, Yeah, they're coming back. They're doing it again. They're doing the sensible thing, you know. Uh, you know. Uh, so I think this is really the model here of where America and Canada and England and France all should be going. They should be reasonable. You know, they should be sensible. Okay. They should use real science instead of these bogus scientific myths that have Chained us to this lifestyle of total destruction, as you say, DNA destruction. We're killing ourselves, and we're killing uh, any possibility of our children and grandchildren having a decent future. We're passing on the damage we're doing to ourselves onto them to a point where they're so crippled. We, we, we they're not going to be able to work their way out. So we've got to act. And I think uh, a lot more Americans got to start paying attention to what's happening in Germany and realize. There is a better model. We just have to work toward it. And it's certainly for Japan, it's time for Japan to get out of this death trip it's on and, and right. you know, take yeah. the steps that it's Well said, taking. well said. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi, what I want to do right now is go up to Dana Dernford, who apparently right. is in his 21-foot uh, rubber boat uh, heading out to sea. Oh, boy. I don't know why, but oh, uh, boy. he is. And let's see well, if we it can... is. It is uh, March. It uh, is yeah. officially spring, although spring arrives late there. So I yeah. think we're all with Dana on this one. Our hearts go with you, Dana, uh, and we hope that your seamanship proves greater than whatever lurks out there in the Pacific, yeah. which is some gigantic challenge you face. So good are luck, you, you, Dana. Yeah, are you there, Dana? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. I'm here. Hi, OJ. It's um I already made four, uh, well, eight attempts all together to get over to the Charlottes, as some people might remember. And in the last three days, I had made four attempts. And so now I got a big liver board, uh, was going to tow me over, but it's too rough to be doing that. And so we're bombing up the coastline and we'll be steaming all night. We'll get there tomorrow afternoon sometime. And look who's, forward who's, to it. Uh, who's with you, Dana? Well, I got uh, some of the dive fleet is ahead of me, commercial diving fleet. Uh huh. And so they got big liverboard to tow around their 30, 35 foot uh, dive boats. These are uh-huh. quarter million dollar dive boats. And so they're headed over to, to pick the sea urchins and the gooey ducks in the Charlottes. They'll get another year, I guess, out of it or two. Uh, it's pretty sparse out there, they admit it. They were telling me that um, you're seeing a. One of the first things they said to me was they're seeing a lot more fish with tumors this year than they did in the last couple of years. In the last couple of years, they had seen quite a few. But this uh-huh. year, they said they've seen a lot more fish with tumors, but they're not seeing as many fish uh, at all, nowhere near it, following them around all day. Because the fish will follow you around all day because you're kicking up sediment and the uh, prawns and the shrimps and everything. Right. But you're not seeing the prawns and the shrimps either. Um, and... 
But anyway, yeah, no, I'm heading up the coastline. We're going to go up to the Queen Charlotte's. This is one of Canada's icon. This is one of the, the true icons of this planet, really. It's an archipelago of just wonderful um, marine life that's been protected uh, by the natives from British Columbia since, you know, since the history of the, of the country. So, mm-hmm. And so it's a unique place where you can normally walk down at low tide and break off chunks that are 50 or 100 pounds of scallops and abalones. And abalone is worth fifty dollars a pound or more. Oh yeah. Uh, it's pick, yeah. Uh, so it's a really, you know, it's a really unique, it's a very uh, uh, volcanic activity area over there. There's natural hot springs over there. There's a lot of um, uh, really, you know, there's a, a a very variety of life over there. Amazing amount of life, but that doesn't exist no more, and we have to go prove that, unfortunately. And I hope I'm wrong. You know, I hope I go over there and it's just endless life i can't imagine it because well if they're if, yeah if fish. they're already telling you there are fewer fish and far more fish with tumors then we've got a problem what are they saying about seabirds and the population of of other marine oriented life anything right and it's just, yeah they know something's going on they understand it but they didn't have they didn't understand what was going on with japan and once they, they didn't? understood that they, they didn't know, know? Uh, as, of course, a couple did have a small understanding. You know, they knew there was a, some going out. They thought that was all blown over or all finished with. So all the, taken 90% care of. Wow. Of these guys have no idea whatsoever, and a lot of them are extremely concerned. A lot of them uh, do, do want to do interviews with me. They do want to try to help me. They do want to participate, and they are worried about it. And these are big players. These are these are huge money making machines. These people. They make twenty five thousand an hour. You know, uh, maybe fifty thousand an hour. Some of these days over here, that I'll be out with them. Uh, they work two hours a day. I mean, that's huge money. They've been at it a lot of times. So they have a lot of stake. You know, they're they've been living an extraordinary life where they go out and they make a million dollars for six weeks' work. And it's hard work. Don't get me wrong. But they see someone like myself who they really understand and they really trust a lot, mm-hmm. and that worries them. That really changes the game. It's not something they can ignore already. So you, r- right now, them. right now, Dana, this moment, you're out uh, how many miles I'm off off coast? We're, we're about, well, we're 30 miles, almost 30 miles up the coast. We'll get cell phone for another maybe 10 nautical miles. It's pitch black, uh, you know, huge overcast around here, and what, what do you uh, see right place, now? Do you, do you see boats in front of you with lights on them behind you? Are you sort of in a string? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm the last guy. There's two boats up ahead of me, and there's about eight, ten more boats coming out behind me in the next couple of hours. Do they know? Hours. Do they know you're there? Are you in touch with them? You, you guys are talking. Yeah. And now, now, yeah, now, well, I just came back in and hooked up with the fleet. I was hooked up with him previously a few weeks back just for a couple of days just to acclimate him to me. And now, now I'm back in amongst them. I'll be traveling with him uh, right through to Charlotte. And I'll use them as a fuel platform, water sure. platform, grocery platform. Yeah. So I'm really fortunate. I'm really, really lucky. And these people know me. I have a lot of people coming up shaking my hand in the last couple of days. I, well, I got in yesterday afternoon. It's fast turnaround. Each time I come into port now, so I'm really... We're really getting the data, and it's emaciated coastline. It's really shocking. Now, this is a big hit to get into the Charlottes. Like you say, we're heading over now. We'll run through the night. We'll probably stop in, on the coastline, wait for daylight for two. We'll get there around 4 o'clock in the morning. We'll stop for two hours. When the sun comes up, then we'll, we'll head across. So we'll get across tomorrow afternoon by noon. And this is something that is so well known around the world. It's one of those unique places and that's why it's so important plus it's, it's such a a protected archipelago and this is really I, I think this is going to push everybody's button out there that is paying attention but not saying anything in the academic community when they see it for themselves unfortunately you know it's heartbreaking to say the things I do every day it's really it's really hard to do and talk to these people and tell them it's all gone uh, particularly, you know, like when you tell people, the older people, you ask mm-hmm. them to be muscles on this coastline. Mm-hmm. And you say, well, you, never, you can never do that again. You can visually see that a lot of them really... 
Well, they don't, that, if they were not very intellectually yeah. deep, they, they could easily turn on you and, and write you off. They do off sometimes, and, yeah. yeah. They do sometimes, yeah. Now, you get a lot of resistance sometimes, but I'm pretty bullheaded. I mean, my usual snapback is there really is three motor reactors in Japan on the coastline, and there really is a current in the ocean that comes across, and there really is a jet stream, and you really <laughs> should check it out. And that's they don't, my they, usual retort to anybody, and that shuts everybody up right on the spot because they yeah. have no argument for that one, right? Yeah. Well, I should think that they're professionals, and they, my God, you should that should shut them down. Come on. The majority of people are really good. Uh, if you get a chance to talk to people, it's hard to hard, mm-hmm. difficult to copy mm-hmm. two votes with the average person who thinks it's like a banana or a potato chip or walking in the sunshine or dental x-ray or getting on a plane, and a garter counter... Uh, won't pick up any of that. In fact, the garter counter will only pick up the, the dental x-ray. The garter counter generally is only going to pick up millisievers and unisievers. This is stuff you would find at a hospital. But it is an indication of higher radiation background. And you would need special garter counters that are calibrated and the people that are using it know how to use it properly to get true readings. And then you would need other teams doing the same thing in order to back up those readings. Got it's it. a very difficult thing. Yeah. It's a very difficult. We have all these institutions on the planet that are already accumulated a massive amount of real data, and so we know this stuff is not going to turn the theory dust and disappear. And so, in one sense, you know, people can go about that road, and I and I, I encourage that. But to myself, I don't need any more proof than the modeling from the other countries showing the dispersal, and then Health Canada, and then all the universities and institutions showing the massive dispersals. If there's one element here, if an iodine 131, they allude to that, and they do, many times over, then there's 10 times more iodine 132, 30 times more iodine 133, 31 uh-huh. times more, blah, blah, blah. And uh, 129 got a 15 million year half life, and that never, now you guys have talked about it, you and the ocean talked about it many times. But it's all these other elements, and they're just a byproduct of the chain reaction itself. They're not the uraniums and the plutonium, but the uranium is the big one because of the chain reaction. Uh-huh. And I see one of your headlines, I managed to get a peek, it's a really bad connection, but they're saying the elements coming out of the reactors are 2 billion times, 2 billion times worse than yep. chlorine. And, and yep. Oh my goodness, and we were going on a 2 million times on the mock, now we got to put a 2 billion into the equation? Oh, my no. goodness. So that's why we're seeing the mass die-off is because these things are all, like I said earlier, and I've been advocating that these are hot particles. Mm-hmm. These are all hot particles because we we got confirmation they used um, enriched plutonium and the mixed oxide fuel, the mock fuel, and all the reactors. At some point, they were in the fuel pools at least. And so they had detonated and released a lot of their inventory, if not all of it. Well, that. But just that alone, not counting the reactors, just that alone is one of the most frightening things imaginable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the most of reactors that are ongoing nonstop, uh, the massive amounts of radionuclides that it's releasing into the environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, people got to understand that the one cell, two cell, three cell critters that are based in the food chain, they don't bioaccumulate, they get annihilated, they, they like popcorn. And so radiation... It, it can do, it can kill one of these phytoplankton every second. It can just pop a phytoplankton in a second. Because a phytoplankton can't bioaccumulate anything. It's too small of a cell mm-hmm. animal. Mm-hmm. And that is the problem with this stuff where it's really hot particles, two million times, two billion times more dangerous than the original dangerous elements. Yeah. Right. That's why I think we're seeing the eradication of the entire species, the coastlines, the birds, the insects. It's because they attack the, all that larvae. Small well, it'll larvae. be it'll be very interesting to see what happens uh, in another month or two as spring breaks up there. Yeah. You should have yeah. hordes of insects, and there should be all kinds of things. Spring, I'm sure, at, at well, at this time of year and, and from here on, in British Columbia, has to be yeah, just right remarkable. Right at least it used to be. Yes, it was, yeah. Right to the coastline, um... And that's another thing, that high tide line, uh, we never really talk about it that much, but that high tide line mm-hmm. is really stripped, that really stands out on the coastline when you're looking at it, and that was a whole habitat of flannas and floras and, and insects and bacteria 
and uh, seeing enemies and all kinds of life was living right there in that little zone. And that strip in particular stands out really naked. I definitely got to do more, find um, the documentations on that stuff and really start beating the system up. Because everybody can find that. They don't need to go to the low tide line. They can go look at the high tide line. Right. There was a huge variety of life, a very a colorful area. Are, are, they, are the fishermen saying similar things to you that they're not they're just not seeing you mentioned there were fewer fish but what else are they saying anything or are they kind of just going along and doing their job and and it's winter well, most people, yeah, they reject it most of them will reject it because that's how they make their livelihood i've seen some of them uh get really upset with me and say my kid will be doing this for 50 years after i'm gone and and I, you know, I don't know what to say to these people. That's heartbreaking to me when I see these, these reactions. Nothing you can say. Nothing. It, nothing you can say to them. But I, you have a, I have a moral obligation. I understand it really well. That when I encounter somebody for a few moments, I should try, and so I do. And you know, if I do get rejected, but I feel that they're just playing. Mm-hmm. But you should be intelligent enough to understand what I'm about to say to them. I say, no, rea- you know, there is multiple reactors in Japan. You really should check it out. That usually silences people. They don't, they don't, because there's nothing mean about what I'm saying. I'm just saying, I say it really genuine. And I think that somehow affects people because that's what I always do now. Right. So I, I, I do stuff like that because I've seen the results, obviously, before maybe. And that's why you have, you, how your brain works is you try to, you only get a few moments to convey something, as you know, on your radio show yeah. with the listeners, new listeners, and you only got that one moment. And if you don't say it properly, you regret it sometimes, is that the ocean really truly is dying, folks. The jet streams are real. It only takes a few days for it to show up and the modeling's were everywhere. The ocean currents are real. The current current at five miles an hour, that's 50 miles in a day. Roughly, you know, 45 days later, it's hitting your coastline. Every day behind it was another plume because all the models are only based upon single release for a few days from a single reactor. It didn't include the fuel pools. It doesn't include reactor two. It didn't include reactor three, reactor four releases. Or the 14 plants that had issues and couldn't go into cold shutdown uh-huh. in Japan itself, right? And so they're not in that model. And I think... I think they're going to have to produce a model like that, or produce a model of potassium-40 with bananas raining out of the sky or something. Uh, somebody's going to have to produce that model, or I'm going to have to learn how to do it and go produce it myself. Because we really would like to see the model, GIF of all the elements, of mm-hmm. all the releases, mm-hmm. of the original dispersal and how it traveled around the planet repeatedly. Well, we, we, I hope... That after four years, we do get some kind of uh, visuals that we can show people. That Look, this is what happened. This is where the current and the plumes went. This is where they are now. This is how they're continuing to stack up and intensify all along the West Coast. And then, of course, they, they migrate inland yes. on several different levels. But this, yes. is, this has got to be visually presented to people for them to understand it. They need right. to see. And I hope that there are... Uh, I hope I when you get back, you can you can crank out a bunch of YouTubes <laughs> on this. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's a great idea. Actually, I thought about it a lot, and you know, you really do need a graphic artist working for you. Yeah, you do. You, know, you really do, and like yourself, you get some amazing stuff up on your website, rinse dot com, and it's just a, a just a, a plethora, just a treasure of. Yeah, that's a, a lot of stuff. So a lot afraid. of stuff. Your archives are just amazing. Oh, well, thank Fukushima, you. you know, it's very simple. Chernobyl, by that emission of it being a couple of billion times worse, the elements, it makes it about 18 billion times worse than Chernobyl. Chernobyl, right. one third the size. Chernobyl, of any reactor, Chernobyl, 30% meltdown. Cher- Chernobyl is using graphite and they sacrifice a million people. Yeah. that were tradespeople and military and that had support. Well, Fukushima's elements were the mixed fuel. That's where they took missiles from silos, they reprocessed it, and put, it had already went through a chain reaction, so it was a couple of billion times worse right away, the elements, the radioactive isotopes in the atoms, 
and then putting it through a chain reaction then made it a couple of billion times worse again. Mm-hmm. That's well, how it we're, we're not, and we're not even close to being out. The plant is falling apart. I can't believe we've been as lucky as we have so far that these spent fuel pools one, two, and three haven't broken loose and fallen down. And I and don't buy for a minute that Tepco says, "Don't worry, spent fuel pool at reactor four has been emptied." It hadn't been emptied. It may have been emptied of the assemblies that were still. You could pull them out and, and retrieve them, but not the rest of them. Anyway, uh, who do we lose? We lost uh, Dana. Are you still yeah. there? I'm still here. Okay, we got to get That's Yochi back. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get uh, Yochi back on. So we got the anniversary coming up, and I really think people should just make a 30-second, one-minute video or write a little article or put out a tweet or put out a little Facebook post or something to say, you know, that... Fukushima needs to be talked about in a loose. You're manner. exactly right. There ought there ought to be major media specials on television with the truth, but we're never going to see it. The only truth we're going to get about this whole thing is from the media, our media, the alternative media. And I hope right. that you can you can do something uh, when you get back to do that. Dana, we're going to let you go. You be careful out Good. there. Yeah, uh, fingers crossed. You. Fingers crossed. You, you be well. Yeah, you take care, my friend. Thank okay. you. Take care, folks. Right. Bye-bye. All right. Good night. Dana Durnford out in the middle of the uh, black, pitch black waters of British Columbia, heading uh, heading north. All right. Uh, Yochi, are you back? Yeah, I'm there. The phone occasionally gets cut off. It's these sort of, you know, temp services that you buy on these uh, cheaper SIM cards. But yeah. lucky well, to thank you. These. We appreciate you. Know, what you, Dana uh, was saying is very important. I wish there was something like a online, you know, discovery channel somewhere where, you know, with production facilities where we can actually make these videos to show people. Hell if yes, well, have, you know, know, but, the fishermen. Yeah, we, I we mean, need. Well, we are working need. on limited time resources. You know, all the rest of us are just, you know, we're we're stretched yeah. beyond limits. Yeah. I wish there was some sort of support there from, you know, any anybody really to, you know, help us out. But, you know, we're on our own, and that's what we got to, uh, you know, expect. And on an issue like this, when the nuclear industry and the energy companies have all the cars, all the, you know, they own the kitty, and we're trying to play against them, it's not an easy game. And you know, for Dana, it's really tough physically, very tough. But what he's talking about, fishermen going out, that's the uh, fish that has spawned down off the coast of Me- Mexico, you know, and they come up in that winter surge, and they get fish as they're feeding. But, you know, the spawning grounds of the North Pacific are like these giant blenders out of Fukushima. You know, the current that goes past Fukushima blends with the warmer current, mm-hmm. and it makes these huge uh, circular motions, these whirlpool, gigantic sort of whirlpool-like motions. And those fish are the ones that are really, really highly contaminated and first to feel the damage. But the problem is that area off the coast of Mexico is not safe either as the California current works its way down. And as these fish, they feed, you know, off uh, the coast up there in your area in Canada, Alaska, and they make their way back down, uh, you know, during this season, back down to the coast to spawn again. That radiation is going to build up, you know, in their bodies, and they're so there. You know, over time, there's going to be that problem too. And I think it's already started, obviously, down the Southern California coast, off coast of Mexico, which has put a ban on uh, exporting tuna and things like that. There's a lot of concerns out on what's happening. This kill off is not something what people imagine. This dispersal is not like a dropping some ink into some water and just slowly spreads across the Pacific. These, as Dana said, are working with the currents, with the jet stream, which, and with the, uh, uh, these wind rivers, rivers of wind across the Pacific. And so these are very dynamic systems. And, uh, and you're right there, Jeff. We don't, we've never been able to really visualize these things. And it's like everything about radiation, it is invisible. Okay, it's invisible. We can't see them. So we do need the help of science on one end and monitoring right. and of graphics be able to understand what actually is going on. Uh, and so we're not in this realm of sort of like ghost-like uh, thoughts, but rather really concrete, uh, you know, uh, reality, you know, very dynamic reality of what makes life, what makes life on Earth. And life, you know, uh, which is so vital to us in the Pacific, you know, the great 
you know, uh, uh, there's a great source of food and uh, oxygen, everything we need to live out of that Pacific. Very no, sad what, that there what, is what, what, what zero is really, support for this work. What is particularly mm-hmm. sad to me is is the government, mm-hmm. and I've said this many times, is mm-hmm. registering the results of their tests uh, constantly in a database. They test everything. Yeah. The atmosphere at, at multi, yeah. multiple levels, the ocean at the surface yeah. at multiple levels below, right. the on-land water, mm-hmm. the on-land topsoil, they know vegetation. They know exactly what's going on, but they will never admit yeah. it. They'll never tell us, not the EPA, not anybody. And we need Yeah, that access. information strangely seems to, seems to be classified, huh? It's, of course. it's very weird. I mean, this yeah. stuff is public need to know Please. stuff. And the first people who are going to get it are like new B two bombers, you know, uh, you know, uh, yeah. nuclear launch submarine crews, aircraft carriers loaded with uh, you know nuclear bomb delivery systems. There, there's something really crazy that in this world, the nuclear gods or demigods, if you want to call them, determine everything, have all the knowledge, control the science, control the institution, and leave the people that the, they're supposed to protect. You know, it doesn't, uh, you know, in the, in the dust. it doesn't work like a DC or Marvel, com- or Marvel Comics, you know? These aren't the good guys anymore, you know? These are the Decepticons all over us, ensuring that we remain blind, ignorant, and uh, at their mercy, and pay their bills and clean up after them. And this is all wrong, you know? Our institutions, the military, the scientific community, are supposedly there to act in the public interest. What happened to that? Why are they working so much against the public? You know? And uh, this is the question that continues as we look between uh, Germany, you know, which is where the government does their best despite everything that they're up against, you know, double occupation they just got mm-hmm. out of, to a great power, democratic republic, you know, fountain of democracy. Like the United States. Why can't the United States be the United States? That's what we cannot understand at, you know, this moment of environmental. We're not in control of our destiny or our country anymore. It's been taken over through a a long period of time, uh, very carefully orchestrated events by international Zionist bankers. Uh, They just own it. Yeah. Period. And I, I've been going over that article about a great investigative journalist in uh, D.C., or D.C. Bureau, Joseph Trento, who wrote a, a seminal article in 2012, the year after uh, 9-11, or 3-11, excuse me, after 3-11, uh, the Fukushima event, which documented American sort of collaboration, collusion with these really militarists in Japan to support the Japanese nuclear bomb program and how the Americans thought, oh, we'll help the Japanese so we can control them. But then every time, the, the horse broke free. You know, the Americans were left holding the bag, mm-hmm. and the Japanese militaries walked away with the prize, with the plutonium, with the technology, with the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the plutonium recycling, you know, the, the, the fuel recycling plans and all that. They, they walked away. They took... That, you know, in fact, it turned out that they were going to sell Savannah River to one of the big Japanese corporations for a dime on the dollar. I mean, it makes no sense that the Department of Energy could be this thoughtless. And, you know, I hate to use the word patriot. You know, the word patriot has been so misused, you know, oh, patriot yes. and all that. Oh, but yeah. could, could, could sell down the American fundamental interest in democracy, you know, the public right to know the Constitution. To the people who delivered Pearl Harbor. I mean, you know, it's a, and, I, and I'm certainly not the one to say Japan is entirely blamed for Pearl Harbor and all that, but it did happen. But it makes no darn sense that you would do that. You know, there would, should always be an element of, you know, reserve there in the relationship that, you know, we're going to make sure Japan doesn't abuse, you know, its technology like it has that these groups have had in Japan. Have had. Not all the Japanese people, but certain, you know, militarist industrial groups will abuse the power if they get it. So, you know, you can't just give a, give a blank check. And uh, going over Joseph Trento's article again, because, uh, uh, you know, it just reinforces why does the Department of Energy give it all away? And uh, not just Japan, but China, the Pakistan, yeah, India, they're yeah. just giving it away 
to people who might abuse that power, as yeah. Japan has done terribly, lying to the American people, lying to the American government. Oh, well, I don't Why know. not call that stuff in? Why not just say, we did this, here it is on the record, uh-huh. now you guys explain to us and tell us the truth and open your gates to us and let us take a really good look at what's going on. Uh, no more games. Be nice, right. be nice. Hold on a minute. Yeah, we have to take a break. We'll come right back yeah. as we yeah. continue. Okay, and we're back with Yoshi, who is in Germany, attending a conference over there about alternative energy. Yes, Germany is doing, uh, I think, they're really leading the way. Uh, just for your information, over here, we don't hear anything about what Germany is doing, uh, except, uh, well, if you think back three years ago, two years ago, they were talking about abandoning the nuclear program. But we people don't understand is that when you decommission a plant, you still have to maintain it. It's extremely expensive to maintain and watch over all of that spent nuclear fuel. There's nowhere to take it. The people at San Onofre now are facing the fact that that nuclear fuel at San Onofre is just about as dangerous as the as the plant was when it was in operation. And they got stuck with it, and they want it out of there. But there's nowhere to take it. So I don't know what the Germans yeah, are doing. Yeah, absolutely right, they, right, right. Yeah, you know, Jeff. It, it, yeah, the costs don't go down just because you turn power off. In no, fact, you got to keep investing in the plant because this radiation is so powerful that, uh, and then you have all this water pumping through there, and you know these systems, uh, they're going to have flaws, and you got to keep replacing. You got to reinvest whole areas of corrosion when it starts to set in or salt build up, that sort of thing. So it, this is just a money gobbling industry. The idea that nuclear energy was cheap was one of the biggest con jobs ever, you know, sold to the public around the world. Is is the costs are going to be immense? It's going to go on for a hundred thousand years. People are talking about, you know, these repository sites, and they're going to have the same problem. They've got to be refitted every, you know, well, five to ten years. And how can you, you know? How can you expect in 100,000 years, how many human generations are they going to be? How long do they expect to keep our, you know, uh, we call offspring, our, our, our descendants, taking care of the mess we make so we can have a cold Coca-Cola? I mean, does that make any sense at all? No. I mean, ridiculous. Of course not. How yeah. ir- idiotically irresponsible us and the human race uh, for the next, Hundred thousand years is going to be cursing our generation for what we've left them. Cursing us, yeah. We will be seen as the worst era in human history because we've left all this damage, this damaged planet, this infinite burden, you know, upon these people and uh, people to come. And uh, we have to act on it. I mean, there is a thing. Uh, there is a moral equation here. If we did this much physical damage, there is a moral equation. We've got to make this effort to do something to mitigate that, to reduce that. And we're not doing that. People are still just watching, you know, brainless TV shows, horribly made movies, wasting our time on useless concerts of people with no talent, uh, vehicles that are way overpriced and come with all the oh, yeah. accessories that are completely useless, uh, phones that are, of which we have no idea what uh, 90% of the apps are about, and we yet we shell the money out. And we waste resources on that, precious resources. And we're not doing anything on our part to make up for it. I mean, consumerism is a disease as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's gotten us away from the basic, you know, uh, things that make you happy. You know, they used to be, never when we, we grew up, Jeff, these are the, the best things in life are free because we had yeah. actually pretty clean air. And sure pretty easy. You could go to a mountain and drink the water when we were you kids. Could. You take a fishing pole. Catch a delicious piece because you can find bacon, piece of abalone off the rock if you can ever pick up a clam. Yeah. You can't do that now without toxicity tests. No I mean, way. come on, the best things in life were free. Now we got to pay for the testing and certification. Yeah. See, this is crazy what we have done in so short a time, just a few days. It's just, a, it's just amazing what's, what has been done in virtually the blink of an eye. Just, just gone. Yeah. Just gone. So, you know, here in Germany, German food purity law makes sense. And why can't the FDA approve something like that? No, the, the FDA, FDA is that owned and operated. Additive. That, yeah, the yeah. FDA is owned and well, operated yeah, by corporations. It's not It's not serving yeah. any of us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a huge problem. 
It has to be remedied because the situation, I mean, we're really, we have maybe have hit the point of no return already, but we got to do at least to undo some of the damage we're leaving behind and act as much as we can. Uh, again, media, terrible. We, we still have to, you know, uh, you know, uh, I hope you get a lot more hits at Rants.com from, uh, from Europe now that, you know, uh, I'm out here, you know, uh, trying well, to get people to see that there is we good, have a good work being done there. I'm thinking of those, yeah. to with explain you, what's happening, you know? Yeah, with you over there, I hope, are people coming up to you and saying that they've, they've followed your work? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are some, but there's a lot more people. You know, Germany is not just a city, it's not like, like, uh, you, like the Japan or U.S. where it becomes a nation of big cities. The big cities still have small town aspects and there's a lot of small towns. So, uh, I think it's a healthier way to live, but information does travel more slowly. You know, people do read newspapers. They do, you know, they do a lot of things. But this is the land of Gutenberg. You know, they still believe in that information is important. It should be truthful. It should be factual. It should make sense. Amazing that they believe in all this still. And so, but if the word gets out, I, uh, I'm encouraging people, you know, to, uh, go to your archives, keep up with your site, and, uh, do what they, use your archives to dig out the truth, the scientific truth, and reasonable opinion as opposed to the stuff in the flax, the corporate flax. And also, increasingly, we see the problem of trolls. One of, uh, people at the conference, I said, uh, uh, names Mako Oshidori, she's a young journalist, uh, has been hammering technical great questions and all that. But she's been saying that as soon as she interviews somebody, within days, there's all these trolls upon her, giving them phone calls, sending them emails, harassment, you know. Just the fact that she interviews someone, they become a target. You know, there's uh, public security guys who follow her, take photos of these people, get their uh, 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 licenses, follow them back to their offices or their homes to find out who they are, then... Uh, get the information about how to communicate with them, and there are just like hundreds of people who go after these people and you know, accuse them you know, wildly of being irresponsible. With you shouldn't talk all these things, sensitive things, all that. You know, try you know discredit people and try to undermine people. Have lost jobs as a result. They go, you know, the trolls go after their uh, employers. We have this called the Gigi Boot, this personnel department, which are directly linked to the police department. You know, to check on people's criminal records, their Racial backgrounds and religious backgrounds, and these are being just used in a Gestapo-like way to hound the anti-nuclear critics and make sure they lose their jobs. And instead of example to everyone else and every company and every media operation, this happens to you if you dare right. challenge the authority. Oh, Not yeah. the reasonable just because everyone knows uh-huh. this nuclear authority is completely out of it. They're right. wackos. You know, they're whack jobs running the thing. They really yeah. are. You challenge. You have the authority of us whack jobs, and we will whack you, too. You got that straight, everybody? Okay? Well, this is state terrorism, man. This is just pure state. This is not sponsored terrorism. It is state terrorism. Uh, and this is what we've got to challenge in our lives, whether it began in 9-11 in the United States or 3-11 in Japan. We have to stand up to these uh, this institutionalized terrorism against the public, which has every right to know, every right to decide what's good for themselves. And I think uh, if they have the truthful information, they will make the right decision, I do believe. And I'll have to trust that, you know, that they will make. But they first have to have the right to that information. And Jeff, you're, you're, you know, it's pared down to your site and how many others? You know, E&E News, but as you said, with their one story and a couple of weeks, I mean, it's, it's I don't even know. I, I don't even know who else. I think we're it, frankly. I don't think anybody else is. Well, yeah, there's you know, the Fuku Lee side, which basically takes the depth code stuff and tries to make sense out of the depth yeah. code garbage. There's, you know, uh, you know, there's uh, Fukushima Diary that tries to take the tweets, uh, the, the tweets, and you know, the little leaks out there. Yeah. There's. Uh, What's the well, one? There's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a few smaller ones. I mean, there's, there's these sites are trying to do their little bit in their own way, yeah. and I give them credit. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes they, they're not well equipped to filter out something that they've been planted or you know sent to them. And it's hard for them to do that. They don't have the research. Yeah. You just don't have. Yeah. We don't have the editorial bureaus that you know great newspapers of the past. We don't have the reporting teams and all that. We just well, as you, as, you, as you as you have said. Network. That since the the secrecy laws were enacted in Japan, 
the information is, mm-hmm. is probably 90 to 95 percent dried up. We were getting stuff before. Yeah. We're getting nothing now. And you've got sources there. That yeah, will the quit. people who do speak out, the people who do speak out, expect to be harassed and even you know fired or ostracized. Right. So that is the hard thing. Is that the truth? This is uh, uh, well, this is a, well, what's the expression? This is a hard road to hoe. Yeah. You know, the, the truth is on rocky ground. Okay, under extreme sunlight. In, in a desert, okay, and these people are having a hard time. So every bit of fact and truth we get, there's a human cost to that. There's a price that someone is paying, okay? Correct. And uh, their yeah. health and happiness, yeah. and then sometimes with their lives. So well, now, let's get now, very straight about what's going on. Yeah, now we have to watch and, uh, them covering everything yeah. up with the Olympics. This is You're going to try and stop it, but they're going to try and cover and mask yeah, well, all the, of it. Yeah, what I try to t- tell people, this is not the Tokyo Olympics. This is the Tokyo Electrical Power Company Olympics. TEPCO this is Olympics. the TEPCO Olympics. That's what's going on, yeah. Man, and you as are I've so written right. in your in a piece for you before, every single one of the major global sponsors of the International Olympic Committee since 311, since right before London Olympics, yeah. is connected to the nuclear industry in some way, okay, they have major corporate connections on the border yeah. director to the business fields or through security companies that they hire. They're all linked to the power companies and electric industry. And this is not about health, sport, achievement <laughs> by all these great young people. No, this no, is about not. the destruction of the human genome at the very top at our at our best and brightest, healthiest, strongest young kids who are just teenagers today in five years they're going to be destroyed you have said it just right again as always uh, have a good time over there uh, say hello to anybody that counts from me uh, that you know absolutely and, uh, absolutely we'll, we'll talk to you next week you? take care good excellent okay that's our program tonight as we uh, will span 311 uh, very, very uh, soon, next week, Yochi will be on Monday, and then two days after that will be the fourth year anniversary, if anniversary is the right word. Okay, we'll be back with you tomorrow night. Thanks for being here. Take good care.